So I've had a handful of people request this tutorial and today it's going to be on how to get smooth even shading in your paintings. Okay, so um, it's going to be a pretty simple tutorial. I'm just going to show you my process for going about it using Procreate. Um, so I started out with this shape I made. All I did to get this shape was select the hard brush and then pick a color and blow up the size really big of the brush and then just tap once. You could use your finger or your stylus, whatever you want. Um, but that's how I got the shape for it. So if you're wondering about that. So anyways, I have this shape here and I wanna make it look three dimensional. A lot of times when we uh, are starting out digital painting and we're trying to shade things, it comes out looking like, here we'll set a new layer to multiply. Say we're trying to add some shadow and we're trying to shade, it kind of comes out looking like this, right? Which isn't really the look we're going for. We want to look smooth, because this doesn't look realistic or polished at all, right? And then sometimes we'll come back and clean it up with the eraser to try and make it look better, and it just doesn't end up working out how we want, right? So, how do you make it look clean and clear, right? So, what I do, once I have my shape layer selected, I make sure it's selected, I make a new layer above it, set it to multiply, get a color that I'm going to do my shading with, and I select the airbrush, the soft airbrush, and I bring it up pretty high. And if you're doing this with just your finger, that might be part of your problem with getting smooth blending. That can be kind of difficult. Um, when you use something like Apple Pencil or another stylus, that gives you the ability to use pressure sensitivity, which means the harder you press, the darker or thicker the line will get, and the lighter you, no, the harder, yeah, the harder you press, the darker and thicker the line, and the lighter you press, the lighter and thinner the line, which gives you a lot more control, but if you're just using your finger, that might be a big problem. I would really recommend getting an Apple Pencil, or if you're doing it on the computer, getting some sort of tablet instead of just using your mouse. So, um, but even still, there's some things you can do to help. So I have my brush selected and I have it set up pretty high, the brush size, and I'm just going to brush in my lighting really lightly. And since the brush size is up really high, I can use that kind of as a gradient, okay? So you can see there, I brushed in that shadow. I'm gonna make another layer, also set that to multiply because now I'll show you what will happen um, if I go back down to this layer under here and I want to brush in shadows on the smaller ball that's attached to it and I'm trying to brush it in, it's going to create shadows down here and if I try and erase it, it's going to create this hard line where it's supposed to be blending into the other shadow, right? We don't want that. So an easy way to get around this is to just make a new layer on top of it that's also set to multiply. Do the same thing on this ball, the second ball that's coming out. All right, and then using your eraser tool, you can erase this layer, but it will not erase the multiply layer beneath it. And you just select the area that needs to be erased. Erase it out. Okay, and then once you've done that, you can just merge them together, and so there'll be one layer, okay? So uh, next, what we would wanna do is the light. So I'm just gonna color pick the ball here, move the light, I'm gonna have it be a warm light source, so I'm gonna move the color lighter and warmer. Okay, and this layer I usually set to screen and it's the exact same thing. I have my shape layer selected and I'm going to brush in up here from the top and that, let's do it down here first actually. Okay, then erase out where I don't want the light. Okay. And then do the top of the ball. Perfect. 
So this is feeling a little bright, so I'm just going to lower the opacity until it's somewhere I like. That looks about good. And you can see that gives it a really nice smooth effect, right? We don't have all this blotchy sort of blending going on. Um, and then from there, I basically go over the whole image and do the entire thing, okay? I put the shadow of, I'll just show you the what I did beforehand so you can see it. So I will um, turn this off and show you. I added a background layer to kind of give it some depth. And this is all using pretty much the same technique, okay? Just brushing it in, erasing away the parts I don't want, and then merging the layers down. So I create this in using the airbrush. This is all using the airbrush tool. Airbrush in a background, add some shadows underneath, a little bit of reflected light. Um, you can see it's a little bit green there, reflecting the color of the ball. My shadows on the ball, the cast shadow from that part of the ball, which you can also see on the cast shadow, it's a little bit more saturated in green and that's because it's reflecting the light of the ball and so it saturates it even more. The ambient occlusion on the bottom of the ball that just pushes it a little bit darker. Um, the highlights, the highlight on the ground, move this over you can see better. Um, and then the specular highlights which are the really shiniest shiny parts that are really hitting the light. And then the last part is the reflected light. Okay of the light bouncing off the ground. And, oh, and then I added this layer just for fun because I thought it looked nice. <laughs> so, um, I did all of this just using the same tool, which was that airbrush tool. And that's one of the ways that I um, get really smooth blending and shading on my paintings without it looking blotchy. You can also, if you are trying to do something more painterly, um, maybe you are using like the paintbrush like this, and you're wanting to blend this way, it is possible. You just have to be really delicate with your hand. Um, if you're going to be blending like this, you have to go really slow and very evenly apply the pressure. Otherwise, it's going to look more like this, which isn't what we want, right? Another thing that might help is if you turn the opacity down to about 75%. And this will help you kind of be able to build up layers more gradually without going straight dark all the way. But overall, unless you're really going to put in the time to practice this, this is probably the hardest way to blend um, just by using the pressure sensitivity and controlling it. It's possible, but you're going to have to work really hard at it to get it to look good. Okay. You can also use the blend tool, which is something some people do. I don't really like using the blend tool because... Uh, I don't know, it can make your your painting get feel muddy really quickly, um, make your colors all kind of mud together. So that's up to you if you want to do that or not. I don't ever use, I barely ever use a smudge tool. It's usually just uh, mostly the airbrush or using pressure sensitivity to blend. So anyways, hopefully that tutorial was helpful for you guys and you're able to learn something um, I still have a bunch of paint overs that I'm working on that are coming soon and I'm currently working on the course on how to, it's all about how to paint and draw eyes, understanding the structure and what they look like, how to make them look believable. So, and that's going to be free to all my YouTube subscribers because I want to give you guys something for being such awesome supporters. So stay tuned for that. I'm working on that and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I mean, a great rest of your night. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>